was a long journey for this little kid that was born on 42nd Street in Fort Oliver 56 years ago. And I took many a journey away, but after 50 years, Tommy's home. <laughs> I hope you don't mind, but there's a few people I've got to thank. First is my loving wife for the past 25 years who's stood beside me back when I had absolutely nothing. But she believed in me. Thank you. I am blessed with two wonderful children. My son, Thomas Cortland, and my daughter, Emily Marie. to be here, my brother Steve, my sister Linda, my nieces. In fact, uh, I'd like for uh, Sarah to stand up just for a second. She has somebody there. Sarah's a graduate of Lamar State <laughs> College of Port Arthur, but little Anthony is going to go to Lamar State College. <laughs> seen in many, many decades. Uh, they're here to support me, Jill and Kathy. I love you and thank you very much for being here as well. My friends from and my family from TJC, thank you for driving four and a half hours to come see, to come see me. It means a great deal. Dr. Mickey, thank you so much. This last person I want to introduce is I want to I want to stand up just for a second. This is my 92-year-old father. <laughs> a couple of days ago was the Navy's anniversary, and he's one of those from the last of the greatest generation. After the war, he came to Port Arthur, Texas, and he met a young woman who turned out to be my mother. We had some good times. My brother John's back there and his wife, Carol. Thank you for coming. I love all of y'all. Dr. McCall is absolutely correct. I've had a couple of mentors in my life. But before I had mentors, I had to have somebody who actually just believed in a country kid that lived on a rural area on a dusty road. I never claimed to have been the smartest guy in the world or the sharpest tool in the shed. People verify that. <laughs> but I'm very persistent. Between my junior and senior year in high school, I did what most kids in rural East Texas does. Maybe I worked uh, bailing hay. We worked in a, I worked in a sawmill for a short time, worked in my parents' rock business. And I was working at the rip saw, it's called a buzz saw, and for those of you who don't know, the buzz saw blade is as big as this right here. And I was pulling logs through it. And I looked up one day, it was about 150 degrees, and I said, God, I, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I would like a better life. And so I stuck to that. I wanted a better life, but I didn't know how to get it. I had a teacher, and if you've heard me speak, you've heard about this teacher. This teacher came to me and says, Tommy, they got something with Angelina College. It's called concurrent credit. I didn't know what that meant. She said, well, you don't have to take senior English. I said, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> but it meant going to college. I didn't know. And I talked to some other individuals at school, and they said, you know, Tommy, Probably better off just staying in the sawmill. She said, We're not having any of that. She said, I'm going to work with you until you pass that course and you do well. One class for a kid who's first generation going to college changed my world. One class. I figured out I could do it. So the next semester, I took three classes. Before long, I was in Phi Theta Kappa, which is the Honor Society of Two Year School. That teacher that you've heard me talk about, because you've never heard me talk about, about 
uh, uh, any story without this picture. This is for class. Thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> jobs in my life. I spent 20 years with the Houston Police Department, and this gentleman on my has to stand up as Clarence Bradford, the chief of the Houston Police Department, and he was my mentor. He took me from being a patrolman and believed in me, and I moved up because he provided me opportunity. Chief, please stand up. opportunity, and that's what I need was opportunity. The next gentleman is Dr. Mabey. This was, <coughs> higher education was something new. I worked in the police department. But he saw something in me and worked with me and gave me the opportunity. And on the front of your program, you'll see hope and opportunity. If you hear me talk, that's what I talk about, hope and opportunity. We have a great state representative, but I hear him talk. And while he's, when he's talking, he's talking about hope and opportunity for this area. If you hear me talk, that's what we're going to talk about, hope and opportunity. I heard something uh, about students first. I believe in it. I had to come up with an acronym right there because I'm good with acronyms. Right? <laughs> students first. First class education, improving lives, respect, service to community, and a tradition of excellence. Dr. Shahan brought excellence to this school. He did a great job. I will ever be indebted to him for him doing that. Dr. McCall, thank you so much for giving this kid from East Texas an opportunity to believe. Thank you, Regents, for believing in me and allowing me the opportunity to serve. Because that's where I'm at. I want to serve. Before I joined the Houston Police Department, I worked for a guy by the name of Charlie Wilson in Washington. I didn't know anything about the world outside of Southeast Texas, but a two-year school picked someone each year to go to Washington. They picked me. I took the most of it. I want to meet my congressman. And then when I'm there, I'm asking, why are these guys running around in these blue blankets? He said, well, they're interns. Well, how do you get that job? I was persistent in what I was doing because I wanted a better life. And I wasn't sure how to get there. And working for Charlie was good life, I can tell you, for a young man. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish he could be here. And when I was told that one of the buildings on this campus is named the Wilson Building after my almost right. It's like I'm back with you, Charlie, and all is good. Yeah, I'm a product of a two-year school, and I'm very proud of it. Because what it does is it has open doors for people who want to do better. And you may change your major three or four times, Dylan, and that's okay. Because I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do when I grow up. <laughs> you see, education in our country is the great equalizer. Not based upon circumstances of birth. And I'm going to tell you how important this is. It's actually in the U.S. Constitution. Now, I'm going to put my history professor on just for a second. But in the U.S. Constitution, Article 1, Section 9, Clause 8, prohibits the federal government from granting titles of nobility. The framers' intentions for this clause was specifically to prevent a society of nobility being established and to curb unfair advantage. That is wonderful. It's not the circumstance of your birth. It's where you want to go with your life. There's some individuals that you've probably heard of, Tom Hanks, Arnold Schwarzenegger, George Lucas, Morgan Freeman, Chris Tomlin from TPNC, Aaron Rodgers, and even Roger Staubach were all two years. Started out in two years. Even the great Roger Staubach, before he went to the Naval Academy, went to New Mexico Military Institute for two years school. So we have a lot. But we even have greater ones here because I'm going to ask anyone who's been to LSCO, whether current or past, to please stand.
Secondly, you instruct, teach, mentor students. And we take off, no matter their age or their ability or disability. And many of you know that I have to write things in huge letters because I have dyslexia. And so I'm a little slow, but I read. But that's okay, because of teachers and mentors who said, I'm more interested in what you can do as opposed to what you can't do, that I have been blessed my entire lifetime. Degree attainment does two things. It provides social mobility and regional prosperity. My friends, when people tell you the pie is only so big, I say, let's grow the pie. Everybody needs a slice of the pie. We're going to provide that opportunity, whether it's through degrees or certificates or continuing education, Lamar State College Warren is going to be the economic engine for this region and we're not gonna stop. We're going to continue and continue. Staff, I wish the staff would stand. Your staff member. Now back in the back, in the very back, and if she's going to have to come forward a little bit, Stephanie, I don't have my glasses on, but I know that she's there. Stephanie is my executive assistant, and she has put all of this together. She makes it into a <laughs> For those of us who have been blessed by good fortune, be part of your community. Be a good neighbor, be a mentor, be a teacher. I heard a wise man once say, don't build a higher fence if you're fortunate. Build a longer table. <laughs> I agree with that. Because we are all, we're all God's children. And this is our opportunity to strengthen our community. I am so honored to be your president. Every morning when I wake up, the very first thing that I do is I hit my knees. And I ask for wisdom. Not for money, not for anything else, but just wisdom to lead the college the best I can for that day and to give us a vision to do great things for the people of come. My dad used to work over here at the shipyard in the 1940s. He worked in the refinery. My dad's the smartest man I ever met in my life. He didn't get past elementary school, but he just figured everything out. That's what I learned from. I learned from the smartest people I knew. Some of them had degrees, some did not. What I have found is you learn from everybody. My dad once told me a story when I was growing up. He actually told me several times. He said, you know, there's this big white plantation looking mansion over in Orange, Texas. And he says, well, we would go to work, but sometimes we would peek through the gates because they were building it. And he said, now, Tommy, there's actually a room in there that they imported from England or somewhere, and it has a roof, a ceiling, and walls that were all imported. Daddy, when this is over with, I'm going to take you to the Brown Mansion. You're going to see that room. <laughs> 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 if there's one thing that you need to know, and I'll close is this. There's not going to be a day that I'm going to give you 50%. I've only had two jobs in the last 34 years working for Chief Bradford and Dr. Mitchell. I don't believe in halfway doing anything. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take this college to new heights because we have the best professors, the best staff, the best community, and the best support system, and the great Texas State University system behind us all the way. Thank you so much for allowing me to be your president. Thank you.